Hey everybody, Todd Wood, Hollywood Cove. How you doing? So today we're going to uh, uh, hack some smoke machines, and we're going to have some fun with these. Uh, I've had my smoke machines for quite a while, and I've changed them up, and they are air actuated and stuff like that. And I've had a lot of people ask me, "Well, how, how do you how do you do that? How do you do this?" And so uh, the I bought new ones because unfortunately the the pneumatics. Uh, destroy the internals of the smoke machine. It just starts beating the crap out of them. So I got new ones a couple years ago that have LED lights inside, uh, six in a circle around the smoke uh, generator. And I'm like, hey, this is so cool. So I hacked into it a little bit and made it just the red light come on with the lightorama plugged directly into it, into the control board that supplies the 12 volts. And so when the cannon would go off, uh, the, only the red light would come on. So I've been thinking about it and I'm like, hey, hey, wait a minute. Those are red, green, blue with a 12 volt power. Uh, I can, that's called a dumb RGB. Uh, those are fairly inexpensive to play with. I don't need anything special for that. So you'll see that I went on Amazon and bought a box and I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through all that. So let's, uh, let's get to the, to the video, to the, uh, the hack and see if you guys like it, you know, give it a try. It's fun. So first of all, we grabbed a normal fog machine that has got a, the, uh, a, a remote control LG, uh, RGB light control board underneath the heater. This is one of my cannons that I've produced that has a, uh, that I use for my cannons. This is one of the fog machines I use for my cannons. And that is the air solenoid on the back. What I'm doing is I'm taking this all apart. I'm redoing my cannons this year completely. So you guys can see exactly what I have. So what we're doing is we're cutting all the cables off right here and stuff like that. So, you know, trying to get everything ready. So uh, what we're doing this year is the RGB board is underneath the heater so we're gonna pull that out and see what that looks like and I'll show you exactly what we got to do yeah and those lights those lights are great aren't they yeah they're so bright too you're gonna love this so we're popping this off had a lot of time to work on these cannons and stuff uh, I really enjoy doing them I hacked the uh, pump and I use light arama because the pump is 115 volts, that Lightorama will switch. So it's really great that I can run directly into the pump there. Okay, I'm pulling the, the leads off of the power board. Those power board uh, produces 12 volts, which runs the board. And then there's transistors on there that uh, produce the RGB. And of course, on this one, it's very strange because red is... 12 volts and the grounds are uh, light the LEDs so I'm just you know just cutting these off because I don't need this board anymore so if you look real closely it says plus RGB you know white is red green is green and black is blue so this is the remote control input on the other DIN connector the female DIN connector so I'm cutting that off that holds the remote control wireless unit in you plug it in the back of the unit and then you have the remote control in your pocket I hate remote controls I think they're horrible because I'm lazy I'd like to things uh, to run automatically so so here I'm showing you uh, how to you know we're gonna strip the wires and here is the cable the cable that I bought from Amazon these are four pin RGB extensions that about there's a seven foot or, or seven meter extension right there and this is a one meter extension cord that I cut in half used one half of it on the DMX controller and the other half is going to be here soldered into the fog machine so we're going to strip this back and uh, we're going to try to get that uh, we're going to tin those wires and we're going to uh, solder splice all those colors on now if you look at the uh, 
RGB extension cable. It is red, green, blue. The wires match the channels that you need to have red RGB. And the red, of course, black in this case is 12 volts. And red is red, green is green, and blue is blue. This wire is cheap. It's only, you know, not even 22 gauge, maybe 26, 28 gauge. It's pretty small. So we're going to twist them real good. Throw some slobber on there. Do some tinning. Got some heat shrink on there. So we can just... I'll just be quiet during this. Oh, I know what to do. I know what to do. So the Lightorama uh, lends itself pretty good to a lot of uh, things that I need to work on. And in this case, the RGB board on the bottom of this smoke machine had the three channels off the remote control. What I had done was the minute the, um, the board gets power, the minute this fog machine gets power, it powers up that board. And that board puts out 12 volts. So the minute the unit is on, it gets 12 volts onto the board, waiting for a ground off of the transistor, the, re the wireless receiver part of the board, to key the transistor to ground the red or the green or the blue, and then the light comes on. All the lights are in, are in parallel, they're all together. And so what I did was, is I took the 12 volts, uh, or the, the one ground wire, to ground and I jumpered over the transistor right to the red so the minute and then I hooked the power to that board to uh, the LOR output channel channel you know two for instance so the minute that channel two powers up it powers that board and since the red is already grounded it gives 12 volts and the lights come on it works really well and it really wasn't that hard to do. But as I'm playing with this, you know, this is the second year I've had these uh, as cannons. I noticed that, you know, I'm like, hey, wait a minute. The uh, heat shrink, always put heat shrink on everything. So um, I've got red, green, blue, uh, 12 volt LEDs on the front of this thing. And lighter, well, I, I found a dumb RGB. Well, Lightorama makes a dumb RGB. That's called dumb RGB. It doesn't have a chip in it. The smart pixels have a chip and each pixel is a channel and uh, the like the lights on your house, they, the people are getting really popular. They're putting the jellyfish lights and, and uh, gemstone lights on their house. Uh, they're all, each individual LED module has a chip in it and those each color is a channel so you can go up to 3,000 channels if you want to <clears throat> so I saw this and I'm like hey, hey Lightorama makes a dumb RGB uh, controller that I can put into the show so I looked at that and it was really expensive so what I thought I'd do is go to Amazon and Lo and behold, they had an 8-channel one there for like $68. And all the cables and stuff for a few bucks, right? And so I decided to... And I do DMX. I have all DMX lights in my house, uh, on my ship. The, all the floodlights and all the stuff is DMX. Lightorama is a form of DMX. So uh, DMX control is part of the program when you buy it. So there's just a couple of you know mouse clicks you got to do. So I... I I made it address 101 is the very first red on Canon 1. 102 is green, 103 is blue on Canon 1 and then so on. And up to six cannons. So uh, uh, you'll see the controller here pretty quick when I show you how to test it. So got the other side. You know, so you can see RGB on the, on the board there. So... Uh, they have those great Phoenix connectors on the uh, controller. And so you just take the Phoenix connectors off and take these extension cables, cut them and strip them. And one thing to learn, this is very important, on the Phoenix connectors, when you have a clamps type of system, to, it clamps the wire down, do not solder 
those wires. This has uh, bitten me in the butt quite a few times. When you solder, solder soft, and when you use a clamp type of connector, uh, like the Phoenix plugs or the uh, speak on cables or something like that, it, that uses a screw clamp, it crushes the solder. Solder occupies the empty space that the wire is already there and holds everything together. And the minute you crush that, it gets, you know, because it's soft, it it gets, uh, it moves out of the way of the clamp. And then after a while, that solder keeps moving. It keeps pushing itself out of the way. And then the clamp becomes loose because now the wire is not the same size as it was in the clamp when you first did it. So what you're going to end up doing, if you even know about this, is you're constantly going to go back and tighten the clamp on the Phoenix plug or the speak on connector or whatever you have. If you're using the raw wire that's untinned, the uh, tin, you know, the, the copper wire that's in these wires and stuff, if you just twist them and stick them in the clamp and clamp them down, that's as far as that clamp needs to go. That wire is not going to spread out any farther than the solder is occupying all those empty spaces there between the wire. So the clamp won't get loose and, you know, through vibration or old age or something like that. So just a little tip on those. I've been, I've been doing this kind of work for a long time and uh, doing sound business and, you know, building these connectors and, and aviation stuff too. Of course, we don't use, you know, screw clamps in aviation. Oh, actually, I take that back. There are some products that actually use screw clamps. <laughs> Experimental stuff. So anyways, uh, here, here we are getting the you know, heat gun. Don't use a lighter, please. Oh my gosh, don't use a lighter. <sighs> Use a proper heat gun. You know, go go down to the store and get yourself, or go on Amazon, get yourself a good heat gun. You know, have the right tools. Have a good pair of strippers. Have a good pair of diagonal cutters, or what I call dikes, which apparently is wrong to say now. But get the right stuff. Uh, that, that heat gun there, the Weller heat gun, is very calm. Puts out good heat on a very small area with the tip on it. Um, it's very quiet, and it is having the right tools really changes everything. Okay, so anyways, so now we're going to heat this up. Now we're going to shrink this down, and then we're going to test it. All right, have to. all right. So now you see it all hooked up. We got the extension cord on it. Going to the box, nice little Home Depot box there, um, plastic. Cantex, uh, Canex, C A N E X. Anyways, uh, all hermetically sealed. Well, all sealed, weather tight. Those little clamps are great. So, okay, here's Lighterama. Uh, it really wasn't so that hard. See, I mean, I had already had it uh, addressed as knowledge of DMX. There's channel three, which there's uh, a whole bunch of lights. You might actually show you how to use DMX on Lighterama. But there is a it. tutorial but on Lighterama. Okay, here it is. Use We're playing it. I use yeah, Lighterama it because I've had it for years. It was my change starter kit, and I'm really not going to change that. I don't want to. So, anyways. I awesome, don't huh? think there's a big problem with it. I, I had a I had a blast doing it. The fact that they all work is awesome. I've got all six cannons finished, you know, lit, and now I'm going to put them on their drawer slides and their pneumatics, and so I have some videos coming out on how to do the pneumatics and do it right. I used to use plywood, and you'll show me throwing the, I'll show you throwing the plywood away because you know, after a couple of years, the plywood just rots in the sun and the weather and the rain. So anyways... Glad you had a good time. I had a good time doing it. So stick around. If you need some more stuff, uh, it's coming down the way. I'm going to try to do as much as I can. Also, building a new ship this year. The ship is going to be much bigger. I really like the way it looks. I'll, I'll, I'll post some pictures of it. We'll get going on that. All right, guys? Hey, happy haunting. Let's get going on this Halloween stuff. Yeah.